In this video, I take Nikon's latest mirrorless camera, the Z6, out for a test drive to see how it does with wildlife and birds in flight. I use the F to Z adapter, my trusty Nikkor 200 to 500 lens, and my Nikon 500 F4 EDG. And just as a side note, I'm not sponsored by anybody. I do all of this on my own time because it's so much fun. Um, Nikon doesn't sponsor me. I just like the results I get from Nikon cameras. With that said, my good friends at B&H did loan me the Z6 for evaluation purposes, which is actually pretty cool because I'm not financially involved in this camera, so I don't really have to justify that I've bought it and that it's a good camera. So I, you know, I'm unbiased. I'll tell you exactly what I think about it. So let's go see what this camera can do. The state of Florida is crawling with impressive birds, like this great blue heron who apparently just wants to be left alone. So let's move on to a bird that is sitting just a few feet away, the always magnificent roseate spoonbill. Let's get some shots in the early morning light. This is one bird that I will never grow tired of photographing. I mean, look at this beauty. It's a living work of art. You've got those very obvious pink feathers, but here's something interesting to note. These birds also have a lot of yellow, orange, and white in them too, especially in this early morning light. This wide range of color bounces back a lot of light from several spectrums, and in most cases, your camera will overexpose these birds. These birds are pretty much just giant reflectors, so I tend to underexpose these birds by two-thirds of a stop or more in order to preserve all of that beautiful color and really show off these incredible works of art. And as you can tell from these images, the Z6 paired with the Nikkor 200-500 handled everything quite well. But let's move on to a bird that is known for some really crazy action, the reddish egret, yet another favorite of mine. And this one appears to have lost something under its wing. These birds are so funny. Might as well check under the other wing too before starting that classic crazy wing display that almost always helps this amazing bird catch some food. And this time was no exception. Head goes into the water at a lightning fast pace, but was this a successful hunt? Of course it was. This brilliant bird is well rewarded for its early morning antics, and as soon as breakfast goes down, this beautiful bird takes to the air and leaves me standing at an empty lagoon. So it's time to move on and find some birds in flight, like these amazing brown pelicans who come blazing at me head first. The first brown pelican on the scene is this awesome looking adult. It's been a while since I've seen some of these with such brilliant colors, and it's nice to see them around again. This type of photography where a bird is coming right at you is usually very difficult on the camera's autofocus system, but in this instance, the Z6 did just fine. Let's see how it handles another younger pelican in the same type of scenario. This younger pelican flew in right behind the adult, and you might notice something amiss in this set of images. Do you see it? When this young pelican flew in, it flew right into a fishing line. You can see it pretty clearly in this image, and I really hate to see this happen. But luckily, the bird didn't get hooked. The young pelican managed to free itself from the line. But while all the commotion was going on, a very smart and very hungry snowy egret helped itself to the fisherman's bait. I couldn't help but laugh as this little bird quickly devoured every single fish in that bucket. It was then that I noticed this beautiful white pelican. These birds only show up for a few months out of the year in Florida, and I always enjoy seeing them. They are so much larger than the brown pelicans, like this one who was obviously giving me the stink eye. That look means it's time to move on. So let's head down to the beach and see what we can find. Whoa, that's not the sun-soaked beach most people are used to. The sea was angry on this day, and this beautiful egret decided it would be best to stand up by the dunes. But the rough seas don't stop this group of ruddy turnstones, who are obviously very busy looking for food among the old decaying sargassum weed and tiny flecks of sand. This is perfect. Let's see if we can get some shots of these awesome little birds. Perspective means a lot in the photography world, and I knew laying flat in the sand would help me capture these amazing little birds as they flick that sand high into the air. And being on this level has given me a whole new appreciation for these awesome little birds. If you're just walking along the beach, you might not ever even see them. They blend in so well with their surroundings. And you definitely wouldn't be able to see them if you were looking straight down on the beach from high in the air. It always amazes me how well some animals blend in with their environment. 
This one has even decided that wearing a small piece of old seaweed will help it blend in even more. All right, enough laying in the sand. Let's see if there's anything flying out over the inlet. Soaring high above the inlet is a bird who has mastered the elements of land, air, and sea. An amazing flying creature with speed, agility, and unbounded determination. A raptor with strength, beauty, and intelligence. This bird has it all. Let's see how the Z6 handles my favorite bird, the always amazing Osprey. It wasn't long until this awesome bird came falling out of the sky and into the turbulent waters below. And of course, this dive was a success. But wait a minute, something's wrong here. This Osprey has picked up a fisherman's bait. You can clearly see the hook and line in these shots. I've never seen this before, and the Osprey wasn't about to let go of that fish easily. It reared back and used its powerful wings to almost yank the pole right out of the fisherman's hand. Right when I thought the line was going to snap, the Osprey let go of the fish and it went flying back like a rubber band, almost hitting the fisherman in the head. But that didn't stop this amazing bird from quickly locating yet another fish and pulling it right out of the water. This time, the Osprey caught a fish that wasn't attached to a fishing line and it flew right at me, giving me this amazing series of shots. As the osprey got closer and ascended higher into the sky, it became clear that this fish was going for a nice aerial tour of the inlet before coming a nice meal for the osprey. And check out that ring of brown feathers around the osprey's chest. Female ospreys are known to have a more pronounced necklace just like this, so there's a really good chance that this beautiful bird is a girl. The Z6 helped me capture some incredible shots as the osprey turned and headed for the sky but there was another osprey who had just hit the water. I turned to face the bird as it rose from the rough seas, grabbed focus, and fired away. These are my favorite osprey picks to date. There's just so much going on here. You have the rough, turbulent waters, this amazing bird who appears to simply pluck a monster-sized fish from the water with its talons, and yes, that's blood trickling down the osprey's left leg. That wound was a direct result of this bird's prey, a fish with a mouthful of razor sharp teeth, a lizard fish. But the osprey, being the absolutely amazing bird that it is, pushes on. It lifts its impressive wings and looks me right in the eye. Time slows to an unbelievably slow pace where one second seems to span several. This is what wildlife photography is all about. That connection to raw, untamed life that always leaves me speechless and humbled by its presence. This short, but very intense series of images is the perfect example of why the osprey is my favorite bird. I lower my camera and watch with my own eyes as this magnificent creature rises, slowly turns to put the wind at its back, and silently glides along invisible currents of air until it is just a faint speck of darkness in the sky. So this osprey pictures, man, that's one incredible bird. And it's very easy to see why it's my favorite. The last series with that lizard fish where the osprey got bit and just kept doing what it has to do to survive. Absolutely amazing. The Z6 did well in that instance too. I really put it through the test with some birds coming right at you. And that's when most autofocus systems fail. With that said, the autofocus is a little bit squirrely on this camera, just like it was on the Z7. But it's really hard to determine if the autofocus is truly what's at fault. There's another problem that makes it really difficult to use this camera in a high speed situation like that. And that's the lag in the electronic viewfinder. So when you're shooting the 12 frames per second that this camera does, everything that you see in the viewfinder slows down a little bit compared to what's happening in the real world. So it's a little bit behind in time. So if you're trying to track and keep your focus area on a moving subject, you can't really do that because what you're seeing through the viewfinder isn't what's happening in real time. It's actually behind in time. So when you go review some of your images, you say, okay, this one's out of focus, the camera missed. You'll actually see that the focus area you're using nine out of 10 times is no longer on the subject because of that EVF lag. If they could fix that, um, this camera would actually be really, really good. And then you actually would be able to determine if it's the autofocus system that's causing the issues. I actually like the image quality out of this better than the Z7. Um, overall, they just look cleaner and nicer to me. Um, the higher ISO images were also a lot better. And towards the end there, when that Osprey came up with that lizard fish, I did wish that I had my D850 in my hand, but only for the extra resolution. 
I know those images would just be absolutely glorious on the D850, um, but I still got to experience it and get some great images, so I'm thankful for that. And that's really what I think of the Z6. Uh, if you have any questions or comments about it, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to click that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, do that too. And until next time, I'll see you later. If you want to know how I set up my D500 and my D850 for birds in flight, check out my website for easy to follow setup guides. And if you want to come with me and capture your own images of birds in Florida, I offer workshops in fall and winter. Check out my website for details and thanks for watching.